for the last uh, about week and a half or so, going on two weeks, uh, talking about various aspects of the uh, coronavirus and how it's affecting us as house cleaning business owners and strategies that, that, that we can implement within our business to uh, manage this situation and make smart moves to be successful. Been having some folks set in and, and, and help us out with some of these discussions. And today you've got a special treat. Uh, today, Liz Trotter, who she's a force of nature in a lot of different ways uh, when it comes to motivating employees, uh, managing your workforce, uh, persuading people, be it your clients, be it uh, whatever uh, stakeholder you have. Uh, Liz has a, has a special gift. And now more than ever, knowing what our message needs to be and delivering it in a way where we're getting the outcomes that, that, that we need is, is really, really important. Um, I'm fortunate Liz is a, a partner of mine in, in several different uh, ventures, including Castle Keepers Institute, as, as well as uh, Castle Keepers on the house cleaning side. She uh, runs a, uh, her own business uh, at, uh, she's been doing for a number of years in Olympia. I could go on and on and on, but I'm taking up valuable time. So, uh, Liz, um, you're out on the West Coast. You've got a lot of uh, unique experiences. You've probably been seeing a little more of what's happening with the uh, coronavirus before uh, some other of us have on other parts of the country. Um, can you kind of fill us in on, 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 on what you're seeing in your world? Uh, sure, Tom. So uh, I think that everybody's kind of heard a lot of what's going on. The schools are closing. There's a lot of scary stuff happening. Restaurants are now closing. Bars are closing. Uh, you're being limited as the number of things that you can buy um, at our local Walmart, Fred Meyer in Olympia. Um, you're standing outside and waiting to go in. When somebody comes out, somebody goes in. Somebody else comes out, somebody else goes in. Uh, when you're checking out, you can only buy currently one hygiene item. In the past, there were five that you could buy. It went down to three, and now it's one. Hygiene item is, uh, it could be paper towels, toilet papers, facial tissue, bleach, if you could find bleach, of course, uh, dish soap, hand soap, any of those types of things. Uh, now you can only buy one. So... It, everything's getting a little bit more like uh, nerve wracking, right? Everything's making everybody feel a little bit more. It seems like we just get used to something and say, okay, this isn't that bad. And you'll start hearing people say, oh, come on, this isn't that bad. And then er, another notch. It's just a little bit worse again. And then, okay, we get used to that. This isn't that bad. And then eh, there it goes again, another little. Eh. So it's pitching us little by little by little trying to sort of ramp it up so that it's not too scary all at one time, but it gets kind of scary. <laughs> I mean, even for the people that don't scare easily, it's getting kind of scary, right? Yeah, and it seems like Mondays <laughs> in particular, Mondays in particular get a little bit bad yeah. because there's just a whole lot of stuff that can happen over the weekend. And, um, I guess really that's that's what I was wanted to uh, talk about today is how do we deal with that fear and what smart moves can we be making within our business to uh, to manage in the face of that fear? Well, one thing that I think everybody knows is that when you're afraid, you feel less afraid when you feel like you have some power when you feel like you have control over the situation and you can do something. So first thing is start thinking about what you can do instead of what you can't do. Uh, when you start feeling like your power is being taken away, it's scarier and you start losing focus and then you start reacting instead of being proactive. So these are all things that you want to try and stay away from, right? We want to try and look for what can we do? Start thinking about, well, if things get worse, okay how can i be ready how can i be, be prepared what are some of the things that i can do instead of everything that now i can't do and the things that are scarier i can't find hand sanitizer i can't find this I, the foggers are all four thousand dollars i can't i can't i can't you got to get out of that you got to switch that around 
reframe your situation, reframe your own internal narrative and your external narrative around what can I do? What can we do? What can our industry do? What can our community do? How can I personally be helpful? How can I help my area, my community, my employees? How can I be maybe of service? What are what are some of those things? So as soon as you start feeling like I can do stuff, some of that other stuff goes away. Some of that, that panicky feeling, that ooh, stress feeling can go away. Is it going to completely go away? Not unless you are an imbecile, because this is a scary situation, right? Unprecedented is your word, Tom, which I love, I agree with. This is an unprecedented situation, and it wouldn't be wise to just be like, do, 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 do. this is no big deal, because it is, it's a really big deal. And But we got to get on top of it, and we got to stay on top of it. Do, do you have some 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 hints or some some ideas you could share if anyone's sitting here who, who's running a house cleaning business it's kind of like gee i don't know what i can do you know they're just looking around and yeah. they're seeing you know things in the news that are scary and you know political figures that are telling us you know what we can't do um yeah, I agree. There's probably there no, there is there's a long list of things that we could be doing. What what's at the top of your list, Liz? Uh, probably for the top of my list is staying in contact with people and keeping that message of that we can do something on um, top of people's minds. Um, I'm I'm thinking about my employees a lot because my employees are critical to the running of my business, right? And staying in business, obviously, so are customers, but chicken or egg, chicken or egg, right? So I'm focusing first on my employees. I want to make sure that I'm on, on top of that situation. So constant, consistent message about what we're doing. Everybody that knows me knows I harp on four basic things, matter, meaning, measure, and accountability. So I'm doing the same thing in this, in this time. Um, how do our individual people matter? Um, how do they matter to me? I want to keep them safe. I want to make sure that they're uh, not going to be in a bigger risk. Most of the people that work for me are in a very low risk category, one of the lowest risk categories. So how can I keep them there? Right? How can I, I keep them in that category? And what, what am I doing to contain some of that risk? Um, so that's how I'm trying to help them see that they matter to me. If they feel like they're not well and maybe they shouldn't work they're nervous great we let them off our attendance policy is very relaxed actually it's almost non-existent at this point if you don't want to come to work you don't feel well don't come to work absolutely and if you need the money and you still don't feel well you matter to me so i'm going to find a way to help you get money somehow whether that means lay you off when you let you get unemployment whatever that's going to mean so um, and I know that everybody has to figure out how they're going to do that in their own businesses. But how are you going to show your people that they matter to you and your business? So that's the first thing. Second thing is, where's the meaning? Gosh, this is such a huge opportunity for us. I think a lot of times we struggle to find meaning in our, our job, in our business, right? How, how do I find a lot of meaning in going in and cleaning people's toilets? Well, ah, during the coronavirus, how do you find meaning? this is it. This is a big chance, right? Here's your chance to show how we can actually make a huge difference for our communities and for the people that really are at risk. How can we help? What are some of the things that we can, we can do? Um, and what are some of the other things that we can be doing that other people aren't talking about, aren't thinking about. I'm constantly looking for these other ideas. Um, there's just an idea that we recently started that um, is giving people the impression that, oh, they are thinking in a different way. So everybody's talking about, don't let anybody into your house, and you know, social distancing and quarantine and all of those things. But how many people are worried about like the entrances and exits to your business? to your home, to your businesses. Right. 
uh, especially now if there's no restaurant, you're going to have people coming and delivering things to your house. More things are going to be getting delivered because you can't go out. Um, how about disinfecting and cleaning that area, the external areas of, of your home? where you're going to be leaving. How about your garage if you're leaving there? How about inside your car if, you're, if your customers are going to be getting into their cars? Who's cleaning those areas, right? All those so high-tech like services we might not think well. about. Because they're outside, right? Yeah. We're all thinking about those. Everybody's talking about the 51 points on the inside, right? But what about outside? How many touch points are there out there? We want 151, too, if you want to look at it, right? So, so part so, of that. That's meaning, a, a, another way. Part of that meaning, one of the things that we've been driving on a lot in, in, in terms of the message is making sure that everybody understands that we're on the front line of defense against community uh, acquired, yes. you know, viruses like it. <laughs> we play a really important role in fighting yeah. this this uh, disease that seems to be, uh, you know, consuming our lives right now a lot more important yeah. than just cleaning somebody's home. And who has more experience than we do? We've been doing it every day, day in, day out for years on end. We have the experience. Nobody is more equipped to do it than we are, nobody. So we have a unique opportunity in, in that way as well. And also for our employees, right? What other job is going to be as safe for you? If you are going to be working, what other job are you going to be as safe? What other job are you fully gloved, fully, <laughs> fully disinfecting every single surface that you touch? Right. Right? Everything that you touch and you come into contact with is being disinfected by you. So any other job like that, there really isn't. Right. So and we're taking even more care to keep you out of harm's way if the customers are sick. So this is kind of a dirty little secret that I share with my people is you've always been cleaning dirty houses. You've been cleaning houses with very serious illnesses in them. <laughs> you just didn't know it. Nobody told you. And now, you know. Now people are telling you and you can be safer. So a dirty little secret, but it's the truth that we have always been cleaning the worst of the worst. And without, truthfully, a lot of our people probably were not following the protocols that they should have been because back a days ago, right? Yeah. Didn't seem like a big deal, but boy, everybody's doing it now, aren't they? I'm not having to have any conversations with anyone about wearing their gloves. Right. This will, this will, when this yeah. is over, this is going to change the way the world looks at cleaning forever. And it's going to make us all safer. It's Absolutely. going to make our jobs more important, our businesses more important. This is scary now, but if you look beyond this, this really could be the best thing that ever happened to the house cleaning industry. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like the virus itself. You get the virus and then your immune system changes and you get stronger and you're able to fight it. So this is like the virus for our, our industry. It's really hard. We're going to fight it and we're going to come out. Hopefully if we do it well, right, we're going to come yeah. out the other side. We don't want to be one of the ones that don't make it out. Yep. We're going to, we're going to be better for this. So uh, let's see, I did have a couple of other things you had asked me a question about what are some of the things I'm focusing on. Mm -hmm. So for my people that matter, hit on that meeting real, real well. Um, also the measure, what is the measure? So there are lots of different things that we can measure and we could measure just what are the things that your, your employees are caring about. Are they caring about how many job, how many clients we're actually serving and helping? That's another way to make them feel good about what they're doing, right? Maybe you want to tally those up. Maybe you want to keep track of team one cleaned four houses today. Team two cleaned five. We cleaned a total of 42 homes today. We help the community by cleaning how many homes? Maybe you could have a running total. Um, maybe you could just go through how many. Another measurement could be how many sets of gloves are we 
are we going through? Or maybe you're using reusable gloves. How many gloves are we saving for, for the medical um, staff? Um, another measurement that you could be using. Uh, oh, I had another one and now just poof, right out of my head right there. I thought of too many all at the same time. Anyway, my point is look for a measure that matters to your people. What are they caring about? Uh, maybe you have employees that have kids. How many employees with kids were you able to help so that they could continue to work? Because if they don't have kids, that's a struggle too, right? And uh, who's taking, I mean, if they do have kids, who's taking care of their kids? There's no daycare. Eh. So maybe, maybe you have something around that. How many people are you helping and keep employed? Um, there's lots of different things that you can measure, but just pick one and make it be whatever matters to your people in your area. Uh, uh, that's my best advice with measure. I, I feel like there are so many things to measure. It just needs to be the thing that your people care about. And then that last thing of accountability, check in every single day. Are we, are we on track? Are we on task? Are we, as the owners of our businesses, are we being the leaders that we need to be, that they need us to be? Are we leading our companies down the right path or are we just going with the flow are we just following along are we waiting until this happens and this happens and then we're like oh well we better change this up or are we leading our people to where we want to go so be that person be that leader for your company right lead them to the right place leading our industry and, so, and you know, Liz, if you, if you still a little bit and look at it, everything you're talking about here is like best practices, always has been, right? So, it's been, so when things get tough and they're tough right now, it's more important than ever yeah. to go back to, uh, you know, the your 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 foundations, the stuff that you've built your Absolutely. business on, and you've got to execute. The things that you know that you should be doing that maybe you know you haven't uh, been been executing as well that, that you need that you've really needed to in the past. Well, now you know the smart business moves that you need to make more important than ever to to to, to be doing it the right way. I, um, and you know, Tom, I like that you said that thing about the basics too. Going back to the basics, because all industries. Everybody knows that if you want to get better, you don't just change things up. The first thing you do is get better at the basics. Get better at the things that are core to your business and then grow from there. So I love that you said that. That's awesome. Sure. It's the blocking and tackling. It's just the, the you know, the, 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 the foundational cores of your business. If you focus on those um, you know, you're, you're being the leader that everybody needs you to be all your stakeholders, your clients, your employees. Now more so than ever, we need to be that leader. Absolutely. Liz? I do have one thing that I want to add to that though, Tom is, and I know we don't have a ton of time here, although it's Facebook live, I guess we could talk forever. <laughs> but one thing I do want to say is because <laughs> people could just check out, right? They don't need right. to be on. Um, um, let's see. Kevin Patrick says you should be taking questions instead of just talking at people. Um, I, I, I'm happy to um, um, take your questions. I'm, I'm sure Tom is as well. Um, feel free to stick them up there if you have some. We're, we're happy to answer questions. Right, Tom? I'm sure, absolutely. I am. Anybody uh, have a question? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, another thing that I did want to say uh, is don't get, even though we're talking about going back to the basics and strengthening that core business and making your business stronger by hitting those foundational things, don't get stuck. This is a new time. Things are different right now. Don't get stuck thinking that you can only do what you've always done and get stuck in thinking about what you can't do. Really need to put a lot of focus on, like in the beginning of this call, or of this Facebook Live, is you gotta focus on what you can do. So if you can't do some things, okay, you can't do that, but what can you do now? What are some things that you can do? So Amy, 
um, you're, you're saying that all of your people are refusing to work. Okay, when all of your people are refusing to work, so there needs to be some new messaging. And I don't know if that new messaging is going to, it might be too late, I don't know. Sometimes that happens, I mean, unfortunately. If you get um, too big of a, a flywheel going and it's moving too fast and going too far, sometimes you can't yank it back and you might have to start over again, I don't know. If that's not your case, Amy, and if you can have communication with your people, then go back to matter, meaning, measure, and accountability, right? How can you add in those things? How can you show the people that they do matter to your company and that you want to be able to help them, but that you also have bigger things that have to be done? You want to be part of the solution. You want to be part of helping the community and putting in your effort. Maybe you don't want to just dig in and wait for everything to pass over you. Maybe you wanna be part of how things are getting better. So maybe these people don't wanna be part of that, but a big piece of the message needs to be how we're gonna be making things better and being part of the solution and what we can do. But keep in mind, one of the, one of the bad things about all of these people losing jobs is they're losing jobs, but on our side, there's a lot of available employees out there too. And, and Amy, Amy, I see that uh, you had two people you interviewed and they want to start working. You're asking, should you hire them or wait? I'm not sure why you would want to wait. I mean, if they want to work and you've got work for them to do, um, no, time, no better time than the present, I would think. Um, Maria, you're yeah, at... I, I, you, I agree. Yeah. What do you think of this one, Liz? Maria wants to know, um, should we approach the entire group to have this discussion or should we do it one-on-one? -on -one? All right, so here's the deal. Um, social distancing says you don't want to put a whole bunch of people in one room, right? I got 30 people. I've got a small office. I don't want to put them all in one room, but I got everybody on uh, Facebook. So I've got everybody on Facebook Live in our private group, and I'm talking to everybody as a group. I'm also talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. I have two messages right now on my phone saying, call me when you get a chance. As soon as I get off this Facebook Live, I'll be calling a couple of employees because I don't know what their individual problems are. Um, but they do. They have concerns as well. So my job is alleviate their concerns and help them to feel good about what it is that they're doing and help them to move forward with their messaging. So, yeah. and that's what I'm doing, but I'm also doing it every day. Every yep. day. I think I have that mean, for a couple of weeks. I, I, I agree. I think the answer to that Maria is both. If you talk to the group, be it virtually or, or one-on-one, -on -one, but everybody's hearing the same thing at the same time from the leader, you know, that's a way of establishing trust. Everybody kind of knows that they're hearing the same thing and, 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 and that's really important. At the same time, if you really want to change somebody's behavior or persuade somebody to do something, a lot of times if you can kind of pull them aside one-on-one -on -one and make that personal appeal, you can stop the group think. You know, if everybody's kind of going in one direction, you can't change that. You can start the discussion in a group, but then pull people off one at a side and kind of peel people off. And before you know it, the group's no longer thinking like a group anymore. That's really what you want when the group is thinking something bad. Yeah, really good point, Tom. Yeah. I got a question here from Chris Lindenthal. You guys, um, we were not seeing your, or at least I wasn't, Tom, I don't, I doubt you were either. We weren't seeing your comments initially, and now we're able to see them. So if you had a comment up above and we didn't see it, please repost it. Um, I'm seeing a comment from Krista. Um, my office staff started calling people to confirm appointments without asking me, and people started canceling, and what should we do? So, uh, one of the things that we have, we did at Castle Keepers is we 
we started again controlling that narrative. Again, I'm big about grabbing control and taking it away. When people are afraid, they want someone to take control and tell them what to do because they're scared and they don't really know the right thing to do. So they're ready to listen. All right, so this is this is what we're doing. And um, this is not, we have different scripts and I'm not going to get into all of them right now, um, but just this idea, have this idea. When a customer calls and they say something like, and the first word out of their mouth is, hi, this is Liz and I have a cleaning at blah, blah, blah address and I wanna cancel my service. Here's what you don't wanna say, okay. <laughs> don't say okay, that's the wrong answer. You want to have your answer ready. And so your answer needs to be something like, okay, and, okay, or, Good to hear from you. Thank you for calling. Here's what we are doing. This is our plan for people in your situation. Okay, thank you for calling, Liz. This is what we're doing for all of our customers currently who are looking to cancel, skip, whatever terminology they use, right? What's your plan for them? Give them an option, this or this, right? Here, here are the things that we're doing. 90% of our customers are choosing to have a 51 point disinfection service done and we're doing this at half price right now would you like to do it now or would you prefer to have it done at your regular cleaning day that's one example of something that you could do uh, great thank you for calling liz we would love to get in there and do a final or not a final i don't like the word final but do a complete disinfection of your home before your family goes into a lockdown mode. Make sure that your home is clean so that you can be secure and safe in your home. Those types of things. Would you prefer to do that now? I can get you on the schedule as early as tomorrow or would you prefer to keep your regular cleaning day? And then we'll put you on hold until this mellows out. If they've asked to cancel, tell them that you're gonna put them on hold. If they really want to cancel and they force you to cancel, all right, I mean, what are you gonna do? But just don't ask them. If you ask them, they're going to give you the answer you don't want. So give them some, some suggestions and ask them either or questions so that they can feel confident to choose one of these good ideas. And if you give them the idea that these are the right ways to handle things, they'll pick one. Do you have something else to add there, Tom? No, uh, it's just, uh, I guess, well, the other part of that is everything's negotiable. And even today, if somebody's thinking that, you know, I need to go ahead and cut back on my service, there's two, there's two dimensions of that. One is the fear factor of, I don't want somebody to come in my home that, that, that might be bringing the virus in. And the other part of the economic factor, there's a lot of people that are losing a lot of money in the stock market and a lot of people who might be losing their jobs. And we're going to get a double whammy on that, you know, uh, back, you know, a dozen years or so ago, 2008, it was tough because the economy got bad. We're back to, you know, the economy is arguably worse now and it was then. Layer over top of that, the fact that you've got this virus out there scaring the heck out of people. Um, but that's going to change. You know, give it a couple of weeks and just follow up. And, uh, you know, there's a casual email. Hi, I hope uh, all's going well. Talk to them about the additional things that you're doing in your business to uh, clean high touch surfaces and reduce the chance of pathogens being spread to, you know, their, 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 their family and loved ones. And, some of them, you know, if they've if they're in a situation where it's not an economic thing, if they think that they can afford it, it's like, well, you know what, my house is getting kind of dirty, and we're all still standing here. Maybe it's not as bad as we thought. Some of them will take your service again, or at least, you know, get you, you know, get you in there for uh, for another cleaning. Yep, and and everyone is different, right? And every cleaning that you can get out of your people is, you know, you're pushing that further and further down the road. That that scare factor, right? Where you're losing business, just keeping people on the schedule. So another, another thing is to like double down on people, double down on the customers that you have. What else can you do for them? 
What other kind of services do they need? Where do they work? What, what, what else do they potentially need? Um, we were talking about some of the outside services. Um, some of the places where they're no, if they're staying at home, where were they working that is now empty that could use some cleaning? Uh, every, every place is going to be needing some more work done. Ask them how they're preparing and how they're managing the virus in their life. And they'll tell you things in terms of how they're changing their behavior and how they're doing things differently and be listening for opportunities. I mean, so while, you know, I'm trying to stay in my home and not go out any more than I need to, and I don't even like to shop anymore, ding, 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 we might be able to do your shopping for you and have that discussion, especially if you're looking for additional work. Sometimes you got to do some things different than what you normally, you know, you, you might have to start offering other services if you know you have too many customers are afraid to uh to let you clean but you know if you got people who are driving around anyway put a dollar amount on it and offer to do uh do uh other services for people that they don't want to go out in the community and do themselves yeah uh absolutely and if you're going to do that why are you the better choice why should they have you deliver them their food instead of Grubhub? Well, because you're cleaner, obviously, right? We do a seven point, use a number if you can, customers like our 51 point uh, disinfecting system. What's your seven point disinfection system for delivering food? Well, or your 11 point disinfection system for delivering food? We, Grubhub just brings you food. Are they even sure that their people are safe? clean, whatever. Maybe there's a way that you, you, you're not gonna be able to test them, obviously. You can't get any kind of testing done. Maybe you could do a, a fever test though, or a temperature test or, and I'm not suggesting that you do any of these things. I'm saying, think about these things. Think about what can you do? How can you be the choice when there are a lot of people doing all of the different things right now? You just have to be thinking differently than you were thinking before because this is not the same situation of even one week ago, much less one month ago or one year ago, right? And I hope everybody's sort of recognizing this trend of every week, it's a lot different than it was one week ago. So next week is going to be very different than this week, right? We have to be ready for What's next? Because we're we're still in the beginning stages. Now we're not we're not almost done with this and just sort of you know ride ride it out. We're not at the ride it out stage. We're at the <laughs> we're just now catching the wave, just right. barely. There's the wave. It's coming, and we're we're prepping for it. We're not even in the wave yet. So. We got, we got to really keep thinking ahead and forward to keep looking at what's coming instead of what's already hit us. All right, see, so we have another question yeah. here, Tom. Yeah, Latasha, think, Latasha wants to know, should she be advertising yeah. or is it too late uh, for, for, for sanitizing? Um, my thought on that is it, it, I guess, really depends upon, you know, who is your, 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 your target market for the sanitizing? Do you know who it is that you're selling that to and how much is it going to cost and what type of return do you think that, that, that you can get off of that? Um, if you're going to be marketing this to like existing customers and to old customers, and if you could do that through emails in a way that you aren't really spending a lot of money, then that seems like a safe thing to do just to kind of try it to see if you got your message right, what type of uh, response you're getting. Um, I'm advising people to take a hard look at what cash they have on hand right now and make sure you're spending it wisely because you know, depending upon, you know, how things go in the weeks and months ahead, you might need that money down the road. So, um, yeah, there's, there's people out there that want your service that don't even know that you're offering sanitizing. And so that's a, that's a vote for the yes, but you need to do it in a way with some expectation that you really know who that market is and you're reaching them. And if there's a way that 
you could do that or at least test that without spending a lot of money to make sure that your message right is right and you know you're you're really going after the right uh, right market that would be my preference at this point given how important i think it is to you know pres preserve your cash And, and I'm agreeing with Tom. So we usually fall on opposite ends of the spectrum sometimes, right? Tom will be like very, very cautious. And I will be like, let's just go for it, right? And so um, when it comes to preserving your cash, we, we're falling on the same same line there. You gotta, everybody should be watching their cash because we just don't know how things are gonna fall. And you don't wanna be in a situation where you are, at the mercy of not having money, especially if you spent money on something that's now sitting in a corner somewhere, right? And being unused. So being really, really cautious with your money right now, tightening up your purse strings, don't spend money on things that you don't have to, don't buy that extra app. If you have five apps that you're not using, if you're using, you know, 10 different apps, oh, and they're all cheap. They're only $9.99 a month, $19.99 a month. They're all really, really cheap. Maybe maybe now is the time to you know, cut back on those, pull back a little bit and save that extra 100 bucks, right? 200 bucks, whatever it is that you can, you can save. Oh, Bridget, trust. I, one word, y'all, one word. Is that awesome? We, we have to have trust. We have to be building trust and our customers need to be trusting in us. With that, we can go so far. Trust is gonna be a huge watchword right now because people just don't have trust. They're so afraid. And that's part um, of controlling the message and setting the message, both for for your clients as as, as, as well as your, your, your team members, your, your employees, I mean, you have to be the center of trust as the leader of your organization. Everybody's looking to you. And if you can be strong and and convey that that you know you got you've got this, then you know, building that trust is what's gonna make it work. You know, we got Sam Mantha Snyder from <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona calling in. <laughs> and she uh Hey Sam. Uh, She's uh, asking about the uh, 51 point disinfection. Can is that something we could post? Yeah, with? the touch point. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you. What, I, it's a it's a checklist. Go ahead, okay. Tom. No, I'm sorry. Um, we have a page on cleaning business today that's got all the resources on it, and you know we'll go ahead and we'll put that as a link on that page. That, that will be a download. Works that that works. It is um, it's just built in uh, like a forms program, job form, any form program that you're using. Um, but the thing that is working really well with it is give it to your employees, and when they go out and they perform the 51 point checklist, have them send that all checked off with their signature on there, and have that send them back to your customers. We're finding that our customers love getting that little checklist. So it's just giving them that extra little, you know, it's okay, it's okay. They're feeling just a little bit better. So um, send, send that, send that off. Whatever it is that you're doing, who else was saying? I think it was somebody else was saying that they, oh, maybe it was Latasha. So you're doing a lot of stuff to, um, you have extra protections that you're putting into place. Are there things, other things that you could do? Yeah, don't just advertise that you're doing them to people that don't know you. Advertise that you're doing them to the people that do know you and push how great it is. Explain how awesome it is, but also push it to the people that, that don't know who you are. And I'm a, a little bit different mindset than Tom is. If you can talk about how you are sanitizing and disinfecting to anybody, do it. <laughs> do it <laughs> tell everybody anybody that can see you as a an expert and can um benefit from what you have to offer i vote yes all the way um 
and, and more is better. And just be ready to also do 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 different things as well. So that so that hopefully you're you're going to be one of the people that is still around when this whole thing really is at the tail end and really when it's time to be just sort of coasting. Because that's not now. That's not today. Today it's time to dig in and work hard. And you know, Liz, it looks like it, we're going to be doing a number of the Facebook lives over the weeks ahead. So, um, you know, one of the things that might be useful is for us to actually get into some of the science of this and the the, the, the lexicon in terms of if I'm going to be talking to uh, clients or prospects or you know my my team members for that matter. Um, using the right vocabulary uh, goes a long way towards building that trust. That's that that's so important. So, you know, we can we we'll get into that in in in, in subsequent calls, or it's not calls, but but Facebook Lives. So, um, you know, hopefully everybody can, you know, be speaking the same language and getting the maximum uh, benefit in terms of getting that message just right. That's great, Tom. And mm -hmm. you're doing them the same time every day, right, Tom? Every day, 5 o'clock Eastern. And it's like 5.40 something now. Wow. This is a record, Liz. This is the longest one we've done so far. Go and figure. Now, this is cool, though, because we haven't really been taking questions like this. Really? Liz is here? <laughs> <laughs> Just a coincidence. Just a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> okay. we'll, Amy, uh, I'm, I'm glad you're saying thank you. I'm guessing that that's, oh, we're over talking. Sorry, Tom. You go ahead. Me? All right. So, Amy, you were saying thank you. I'm guessing that's to the 51 point uh, checklist and happy to do that. But also, if you're needing any more help with your base, let me know. Reach out, right? You got my number and uh, happy to happy to chat with you. Uh, sounds like it has been a struggle. So I'm also going to be filming just a video on uh, some some basic messaging for your employees and how to keep growing that message and adding to it. Um, and I'll, I'll get that uh, put on cleaning business today as well. Uh, Maria Dorian asked me to please create something for uh, the employee messaging because we keep even when we start talking about employees, we find ourselves kicking right back over to the, the client messaging because we're nervous that, you know, where's our revenue? So uh, we'll get an employee messaging out there, though. You betcha. Well, I really appreciate everyone taking their time and participating and helping us with uh, you know, these uh, Facebook Lives. I want to show everybody where we are at Cleaning Business Today. And this is how we subscribe to our uh, newsletter. And um, we're going to be doing more newsletters, more information on uh, the uh, coronavirus and how we can make smart business moves while in the face of this adversity, we can uh, go to a page here. It's just forward slash corona dash coronavirus dash downloads dot com. It's not even dot com. Cleaningbusinessday.com forward slash coronavirus dash downloads right here. Um, and we've got a number of resources. Some of them, a number of them are downloads, actually. Some of them are books and other resources. Some of them are just um, examples of uh information that would be useful. We'll take Liz's uh, 51 point checklist and we'll, we'll include that to this list. Feel free to help yourself to use any of the information that uh, you download from, from this page. So anything else, uh, any parting words, Liz? No, no just, just everybody, everybody remember, remember that, that that but everything is going to keep, keep moving forward 
you keep more moving forward too and keep thinking about what, what you can do try, try not, not to concern yourself about what, what, what can't you do since you, you can't do it anyway what, what, what can you do what can you do what can you do what can you do yeah i mean this is going to be this is going to be tough and this isn't going to be going away i mean this is going to be going on for for you know several months a number of months but we're in a really good place and you know consumers are going to see a lot of value in what we're doing here and on the end of this what we're doing is going to be perceived as being much mm -hmm. higher value than what it ever has been in the past so um, now's the time to be uh, making the right moves, making the smart moves. And, you know, Liz, myself, uh, you know, we're all going to work really hard to try to help each other, uh, you know, get there and, and, and make the most of what one day we'll look back and call this an opportunity. So with that being said. Oh, one more thing along those lines. Sorry, Tom. Uh, Debbie is also putting on a, a virtual event today. If you haven't heard about it, go to Cleaning Business Profits, I think. Mastermind Profits. Oops, I'm sorry. If you just look for Debbie or Debbie, you will find, find it. it. The yeah. event is tonight at 8, 8 Eastern, Eastern Central, Central, 5 Pacific. So that's an More right information, I can almost guarantee it. Almost two hours from now, a little over two hours from now. Yep. Be there, be there, be there, be there, I'll be there. Okay. Well, again, thank you. And uh we'll uh we'll be back here uh same time tomorrow. If uh you have any questions that pop up in the interim, anything we can help with, please please reach out. Okay. Stay safe. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye everybody.